Sup guys, well, I decided to uh, snatch one of these uh, 7700Ks because I just kind of wanted an i7 for a while for no other reason other than I kind of wanted it. My 6600K was doing fine and yeah, basically no one with Skylake or, or yeah, no one with Skylake should be upgrading to Cabby Lake. It's completely pointless. It's literally the exact same chip with like some more overclocking potential and then a couple of other random things. Like I think they have like some bullshit Netflix 4K streaming decoding thing. Don't really care about any of that at all. Don't have 4K monitor, 1440p, 100 hertz. I'd, I'd much rather have that. Anyway, so I've got it at five gigahertz right now at uh, 1.32 volts, 100% stable. I've literally like run benchmarks for like hours played games many different games for hours never had a crash never had anything happen i'm still not gonna call it 100 percent rock stable yet but it hasn't been messing up so i'm gonna call it at least game stable uh these are attempts i get after running uh ida's little stability test for about 30 minutes in about a uh, 77 degree room it was probably about 76 when I started the whole thing. It went up a degree or two. But, uh, and then for GPU, I still have my uh, 980 Ti from Zotac. But, uh, here's uh, some benchmarks that I ran. Obviously these aren't going to change very much because, well, still these are probably GPU bound. These I don't think these tests were ever CPU bound really. But I think they might have gone up just a hair, but they're not very different from what I had with my 6600K, nor was I expecting them to be. This went way up though. I used to average about, I think, 16,300, but now we're doing pretty dang good. Let's zoom in here. 21,000 for graphics score. There we go. Zoom in even farther so we can actually. 21,000 for graphics score. 15,956 for physics. And a combined score of 9,449. And that puts me at the 96th percentile. But that's just the uh, normal fire strike. That's not extreme or anything like that. I thought I'd probably get around, I haven't even run Extreme yet, I think I'd probably get around 8,600, 8,800, something like that in Extreme. And this just isn't a 4K computer, even though it says that it's as good as a 4K gaming PC. I mean, it could do 4K if I was okay with 30 frames a second, but I'm not. Got to have my at least 60, although now I'd like 100, so even 60 seems a little slow to me, but I can, I can deal with 60. Can't deal with 30. Anyway, on to the next test. Here's pass mark. Kind of cool being the night in the 99 percentile in total. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Zoom in again. 98th on the CPU, 99 on the 2D and 3D and memory, and 90 on disk. That little silicone power 240 gig SSD was a good buy. I've had it for about two years or so now, and I only paid $99, and that's back when the average 240-gig hard drive was still about 115 to 120 So, got a good deal on that. But, did pretty dang good on that test. And here's how it did in Geekbench 4. That's some crazy single-core performance. Oh, and I'm still running this on a uh, Z170 chipset. I didn't feel like upgrading my motherboard. There's really nothing up that's that special. I mean, Octane might be cool, and if it's really, really worth it, I'll upgrade then. But for now, I figured I'd just deal with it. Plus, I just like the way it looks with my white build. I think that motherboard looks pretty cool. And I think... Oh, oh there's one more test here. Also ran Cinebench R15, overclocked 5 gigahertz, got 1087. It doesn't say that it's 4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz there, but it is. And then we got 182 frames for my uh, 
980 Ti in their little OpenGL test. All right. Oh, and then Time Spy, of course, one of the newer benchmarks. I think it did pretty decent, considering my GPU is kind of getting on the older side, but it's still probably right around a 970, or a 1070, rather. Hell, probably beats it in some things, and the 1070 will win in other things. Okay, mine's pretty overclocked. But this one puts me at just under 80%. Of all, game, of all PCs, that's pretty cool. But I'm not really going for, you know, balls to the wall. If I was going for ball to the wall benchmarks, I'd go buy an X70 or X99 motherboard and a 6800 or wait for uh, AMD's new Ryuzen CPUs to come out and just build a whole new computer. But I mainly game and I edit the occasional YouTube video like this, and obviously my YouTube videos are nothing super special. I'm nothing like, you know, the big league uh, YouTubers. But the main reason I made this video was uh, just to uh, show uh, what a uh, KB Lake processor could do with uh, just a normal guy, average Joe. I, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones that got five gigahertz. Obviously never assume you're gonna buy a processor and be like, boom, I'm getting the speed that everyone else gets. Every CPU is different. Some might win the silicone lottery, some might lose. Me, I got lucky this time. Some people get even higher than five gigahertz. Mine won't really go over five gigahertz. I put it up to 1.35 volts and it just isn't stable at uh, uh, one point or 5.1 gigahertz. So I'm fine with five gigahertz, that's sweet. I haven't had a five gigahertz CPU since my 2500K and that thing was awesome. Only reason I ever even got Skylake in the first place was because my P67 motherboard died. Otherwise, I'd still probably be with my uh, 2500K and be completely happy. Wouldn't be winning any benchmarks, but I'd still be gaming just fine, I think. Anyway, though, I obviously can't recommend this as an upgrade to people with Skylake, but if you've got a 2500K or something like that or an old FX chip and you don't feel like waiting for AMD's reuse end, which is honestly what I would wait for. I wouldn't buy a KB Lake CPU right now, right off the bat. And this comes from someone who owns one. I literally bought this because I wanted it, and there's really no other reason behind it other than that. So, but if all you care about is getting, you know, a little bit better uh, overclocks and whatnot, and you're on an FX chip or a, a Sandy Bridge, or maybe even earlier, I would I'd recommend this they're good just as good as Skylake only get a little bit more overclocking potential so I would call this a refresh this is nothing super special but anyway that's about it for this video uh, I'll probably run some actual like in-game benchmarks from like GTA 5 and whatnot just to show how it uh, how it runs I definitely get a few more uh, frames in uh, GTA 5 and it's definitely a more consistent frame rate in that particular game, but it's really the only game I've played uh, a super long amount of that I was having problems with my 6600K getting up to uh, 99 to 100% utilization sometimes when I'd go into the city. That doesn't happen with this CPU anymore. I think the highest I've ever seen it go is 70%. Anyway though, that's about it for this video. So, till then, peace out. Till the next one, peace out guys.